And now some ways to save money for your building out your running shoe rotation. Joe's New Balance Outlet. What a day, what a day. How's everyone doing? Good morning, we're diving right into the studio. Here we go, running shoes, all talking about how to build up a running shoe rotation, the process that I go through, and then also some tips and tricks on how to save some money toward the end. So we are diving in. I did not do any filming on today's run. It's, uh, so we got about seven to eight inches of snow last night. It's kind of nice. And today's run was just a perfect day just to disconnect. And I just went nice and easy, eight minutes a mile, so steezy pace for sure. And it was about, so they plowed the, the, the creek path that I was on today, and it was like probably, two inches of just fluffy powder to run on. It was just amazing, nice and soft, and just disconnected. So eight miles today in the Hoka Speed Goat 4. There it is over there, as well as right here. We're, pro we're probably gonna get to 50 miles in this shoe very quickly, because I guess I'll just lead off with this. One tr uh, tip that I use for the winter time is I use trail shoes uh, to run through the snow. So rather than using road shoes, even though I'm running in an urban environment on sidewalks and pavement, you might think, oh, that's, that warrants using a road shoe, but I don't want to slip and fall. So the Hoka Speed Goat 4 and the Hoka Evio Speed Goat have proven to be very, very valuable uh, during these winter months here in Denver, Colorado. Okay, what am I always saying about running shoes and about this sport of running that we love? It's accessible, it's affordable, and it's efficient, the sport of running. So real quick, accessible, you can run out your front door, you don't have to drive to a gym, you don't have to drive to a mountain, you don't have to drive anywhere, you just leave out your front door most often, depending on where you, but most often that is the case. So it's, it's accessible, you can just go do it. Um, yeah, you just do it, you don't need a ball, you don't need a bike, like I'm always saying. Um, it's affordable, now this is maybe a little controversial, more, uh, more so these days, because running shoe prices are going up, I realize that, especially with all the carbon fiber plates hitting the, hitting the scene, but for the most part, our sport is, a little, is more affordable, it really is, compared to other sports out there. And then it's efficient. The workout that you can get in 20 to 30 minutes is amazing. Like a 20 to 30 minute run, the benefits that you receive is, is off the charts. So, okay, that's what I mean by um, accessible, affordable, and efficient. And yes, as runners, all we need are running shoes at the end of the day. Now, is it nice to have a, a running watch? Yes. Is it nice to have a vest to carry water? Yes. Um, is it nice to have, uh, you know, running socks that can wick away moisture? Yes. But do you have to have those items? Actually, you don't. You really just need running shoes, and that's where today's topic comes into play. Now, here's my process for building out my running shoe rotation. Maybe you do something similar, but here, here's mine. Okay, so there's two major categories for running shoes. You know them, road shoes and trail shoes. So my, my uh, little strategy, I call just the reverse funnel. Okay, so here's the, here's the reverse funnel, one for road, one for trail. That's the first question I ask myself. Do I need more road shoes or do I need more trail shoes? And how do you figure out the, the answer to that question? Where do you live? Where do you do most of your runs? Okay, now there are some shoes that I think can cross over between the two. Okay, for example, the Nike Wild Horse 5. I think this is a shoe that can, uh, it's a, it is a trail shoe, but I think it can be pulled off to run on the concrete and pavement where you live. What I like to call a commuter shoe, meaning you can commute from your house, from where you live, to the trails. So you could do two or three miles on the roads and then get to the trails, do three or four miles out in the trails and then run back to your house uh, on the roads again. So this is kind of a crossover shoe for me, the Nike Wild Horse 5. So that's the first question I ask myself is, where do I live uh, and what do I, need, what do I need more of, a road shoe or a trail shoe? Okay, the next funnel, all right? So within that funnel, you have two more categories. Do I need stability shoes or do I need neutral shoes? Like, and that comes down to your, your overpronation essentially. Like if you really overpronate and you need more stability through your shoe, then yes, you're gonna be looking for a stabilized option. Like, and it's not out here in the studio, I forgot it, is the Hoka Arahi 4. Uh, which I did a first impression this past week on. It's a stability shoe from Hoka as far as in that road category. So that's the second question, is stability or neutral? Okay, and the next funnel, all right? And this is the process. I go from the top all the way down this funnel chain. So it's the types 
of runs that you do in your in your training philosophy and your and how you train okay so there's different types of runs you've got easy days you've got middle distance and long run days we talked about middle distance runs yesterday you've got tempo days threshold days interval training and yes race days okay so there you go so those are some more funnels that go down the line there and one last point on these different types of runs is i listed six different types of runs there they are on your screen right there okay so building out your running shoe rotation for all six runs for like i said it's, it's going to take time but you can also lump some of the runs together so you don't have to have a different shoe for every single run i think for example some people would use the same shoe uh, for a tempo day as they would for a long run. I think you can diversify a little bit more. For example, I, don't, I wouldn't use the Kinvara 11 for a long run. I know some people will. I think it's a little too minimalist for me, uh, but you can lump together different types of runs with one shoe. For example, a lot of elite runners at this point are using carbon fiber plate running shoes almost all the time it's okay it's kind of surprising to me i don't take that approach but you know whether it's a long run or even even it's crazy but even interval days on the track they will be pulling out their carbon fiber plate running shoes to do that that's my process once again road or trail neutral or stability and then the different types of runs that i'm going for now let's get specific about building out that rotation okay i have a list of shoes here for you for easy days long runs tempo days etc etc okay you all know the drill easy days we're looking at the new balance beacon lineup the uh, sketchers go run eight which i believe is out here as well you've got the nike pegasus 36 uh, you have the adidas ultra boost 19 or 20 which is now out as well uh, for the trails i'm going to put you in the nike pegasus 36 trail absolutely amazing i love this for an easy day shoe and yes i'm even going to say the saucony mad river tr for an easy day trail shoe all right there you go and this is that you know if you're coming like couch to 5k like you're just just getting into running uh these shoes are perfect starter shoes for you again sketchers go run ride eight new balance beacon uh nike pegasus lineup uh the adidas ultra boost lineup all right there you go those are my top four probably for those easy day shoes okay the long run shoe we're looking at the asics glide ride here it is coming off the shelf there it is oh love this shoe asics glide ride absolutely falls into the long run category for me or middle distance as well as we talked about yesterday the sketchers max road four i believe it is out here yep there it is sketchers max road four the, the nike vomero 14 also falls into my long run category a lot of people love that shoe just so you know uh, Nike, remember my issue with the Vomero 14 last year? The top of the uh, lacing system was cutting into the top of my foot, and I was not the only one that I was experiencing that. Nike updated the tongue of the Vomero 14, so there's a new tongue. I haven't seen it yet, uh, but that is great news. They listened to us, I guess, like a lot of people must have been complaining about that because it was not good. So the Nike Vomero 14 has a new tongue that falls into my long run shoe category as well. And then, yes, I don't know if you can see it here, we've got the Hoka Carbon X, a carbon fiber plate shoes, which I usually don't use uh, too much in my regular training carbon fiber plates, but I did use this for long runs in 2019, and I actually liked it a lot. Now, I did have an issue with the heel counter rubbing on my heel. I ended up having to put some Band-Aids back there to, to reduce the chafing, basically. But anyway, I did enjoy this shoe quite a bit from 2019. So there you go for long runs. And moving on to those tempo days, so faster paced runs. Here we go. Oh man, what a great lineup. So we're gonna go first with the Saucony Kinvara 11. I can already tell this is gonna be one of my favorite tempo day shoes of 2020, Saucony Kinvara 11. We've got the Nike Zoom Fly 3 from 2019. Solid shoe, a little heavy, but I enjoyed running in this in 2019. Not my go-to, but it was a solid choice for tempo days. There it is, the Nike Zoom Fly 3. Oh, the New Balance Fuel Cell Rebel. I, I'm shocked that I did not run in this more. I think I just ran out of time, but I love this shoe. I'm gonna, I'm probably gonna ante up and get in the next iteration, if not just buy this one again, the New Balance Fuel Cell Rebel. And last but not least, we'll come back to this in a minute, but the Hoka Rincon, yes, for a tempo day. I'll talk about this in a minute. And last but not least, um, and I know I didn't talk about thresholds, but I'm gonna, I'm gonna uh, lump it in with racing as well. So for racing, 
coming up. Oh man, now I'm getting ready for a marathon, but a lot of carbon fiber plate running shoes coming out. We've got the Brooks Hyperion Light coming out soon, the Saucony Endorphin Pro, the Skechers Speed Elite Hyper is now available. Adidas' shoe, which I don't know the name of yet, uh, but we saw it revealed at the Houston Half and Full Marathon just a couple weeks ago. Um, and it's not available It's not available yet, but it is coming, and it'll be interesting to see how they roll out that shoe. And then, of course, the Nike Next Percent for racing, which when I do my threshold days, so pretty fast days for me, um, I do like to lace up with a carbon fiber plate running shoe for my threshold days. The key, key workouts for me leading into a marathon race. Now, I know I didn't talk about interval training. Um, if I had to choose, like for example, I'd probably go with Adidas. This is the Adidas Audios 4, uh, but the Adidas Audios 5 is now available. So that would probably be one of my go-to choices for a more nimble, lighter shoe from Adidas uh, for an interval day on the track. Two more points before we wrap up real quick is as far as saving money and attempting to build out your running shoe rotation in a smart way is to find shoes that can accomplish different tasks in your training regimen. Meaning the, those different types of runs that I listed, right, there they are again. So what shoes can accomplish these different types of runs? Okay, so that's why I think the Hoka Rincon became such a fan favorite in 2019 and it was one of my favorites because it could be a tempo day shoe because it's light enough and it has a little bit of pop through that midsole, but it also has enough midsole protection that this could be a long run shoe. So it, it knocks out a couple different types of runs in one fell swoop. Um, is there another one out here? Well, I'll just say, um, yeah, I'll just say the Nike Pegasus 36 Trail, as far as a trail shoe, I think it's versatile enough that it has enough midsole protection that you could take it out for a long run on the trails, but also um, enough lug depth that you could do, you know, quite a bit of vertical gain in this shoe, the Nike Pegasus 36 Trail. And I'm just looking around here. Uh, for example, the Innovate Mud Claw is a very niche shoe. You could not do, I would not do a long run in this shoe. This shoe is made for, I would say, you know, five to 12 miles through crazy mud type of shoe, at least in my opinion, uh, based on that midsole protection and coupled with that, uh, that outsole. Okay, and now some ways to save money for your building out your running shoe rotation. Joe's NewBalanceOutlet.com. Joe's NewBalanceOutlet.com is one of my go-to spots. Like dirt cheap. Like I think I at one point I saw Beacons there for I think forty dollars. New Balance B. Be I don't. I think they're sold out at this point. At least last time I checked. Maybe they've emptied up again and they have some more. But Joe's NewBalanceOutlet.com. I've had some really good success at Dick's Sporting Goods.com. Dick's Sporting Goods.com. For some reason. I don't know what it is, but I just, I more like those bigger brands, Nike and Adidas, but DickSportingGoods.com, Zappos.com, yes, I buy shoes from Zappos, you better believe it, I know these are big companies, but Zappos.com, and last but not least, of course, many of you use Running Warehouse, I use Running Warehouse all the time, and they have a great clearance section that they update all the time, so RunningWarehouse.com, and then go check out their clearance section, which is listed right there on their home Paid. Okay, I hope that helps. One more time. Here we go. Rotor trail. Okay, rotor trail, stability or neutral. All right. And then your types of runs and with the goal of attempting to find some shoes that, that can accomplish uh, multiple types of runs in your training regimen. All right, question of the day. What is your process for building out your running shoe rotation? Or maybe you have something similar to me, like a similar process. Maybe you do something totally different. Let us know down in the comments your process for building out that running shoe rotation. If you want to let us know some different shoes that you use for different types of runs, that would be cool as well. So I know we were just here in the studio today, but I wanted to get this vlog out the door because I get a lot of questions about how I build out my running shoe rotation. All right, everyone. Thanks for being here. Thanks for watching. We're going to toss it back to different types of runs that I like to incorporate into my training regimen. That'll be on the right. And then on the left, we talk about different drops in running shoes. All right. So different drops that'll be on the left. All right. See beauty, work hard and love each other. See you tomorrow.